Hello and welcome back for another VMK in the C++ series. In this VMK I'm going to show you how projects are grouped together and how you can use libraries so that you can break up your code into different locations uh, within different projects. If you find my videos helpful and you can support my website, you can do so by clicking on any of the Google ads found on the side, clicking on any of the PayPal icons found throughout the site, or you can also help me out by purchasing anything from the store or by buying a membership. Alright, let's get started by going into Visual Studio and creating a new project. I'm going to create a Win32 console project. I'm going to call this Main Project. Under Application Settings here, you'll have Console Application selected, and you'll notice that it creates our main entry point into our program. Now what I want to demonstrate in this video is how you can link in libraries so that your code will be broken up into pieces. Now when I say pieces, what I mean is you want to create your programs in such a way that you can reuse code easily. So for instance, if you're making a game, it may be logical to create a library that will hold all the math calculations. You can use these math calculations in one game, you could use it in another game, or you can even use it in some other application that you're creating that has nothing to do with games, but rather just needs to do some sort of mathematical calculations. Because you want to be able to reuse your code, you want to have a mechanism so you'd be able to use your existing code from one library in with all different kinds of projects. Now the way I'm going to demonstrate this is I'm just going to create a second project which is going to be a static library and the static library is going to have one function in it. That one function we're going to call from within main and you'll see how all the linkages work inside Visual Studio. So first things first, we already created this one project which is inside of our solution and the project itself is called main project. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on solution right click and select add, add new project. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second project that's going to sit inside of this one solution. Again it's going to be a Win32 console project and this time I'm going to call it my library. Under application settings here, specify you want to create a static library. And I'm not going to use precompiled headers so I'm going to unselect that and click finish. Notice that now we have a second uh, project listed inside of our solution and it's called my library. Inside of here we don't have any CPP or .h files, we have to add these in manually. So I'm just going to right click, select add, add new item and I'm going to create a header file. I'm going to call it my lib and I'm also going to do the same thing for um, our CPP. Now I noticed that it uh, placed these in the wrong order here so I'm just going to move them around so that the CPP is inside of the source files folder and the header is inside of the header folder. I'll open up my lib.h and inside of here we're, we're going to have to create a define. You do this so that when you're accessing files from different locations, the compiler doesn't get confused on how many times you've declared different things. The way we do this is we type out if not defined and the name that you want to define, I'm going to use mylib underscore h, then we type in define mylib underscore h and then at the end we have and if mylib underscore h. So what this tells the compiler is if this variable here is not defined then we're going to define it and then go inside of here. Second time we call this uh, header file it's already going to have mylib defined so it's going to skip it over which means this code that's inside of here is only going to get executed once. And inside here I'm just going to define a function which is going to uh, let's say it's going to return a floating point number um, my function we're not going to pass in any variables. So that's how I'm going to declare it. And over here in the CPP, we're going to actually write the body of our program. We're just going to return some number, let's say 3.14. 
Now, because we're inside of the CPP, we need to also include my lib under or dot h, and don't forget to put these in brackets. We can compile this, and it should be okay. It shows succeeded, and we can actually right-click on this and build it. As soon as we do that, we can go into our folder where our project resides and see our library now exists. So here we are in the Visual Studio Projects My Library folder, and we can see here's our .cpp and .h file, and under the debug, this is where our library is constructed. We have mylibrary.lib. This is what got created whenever we built our library. And we can confirm that by going under My Library, right-click, and go under Properties. And you can see the output directory is debug. And the librarian says that the output directory slash mylibrary.lib is what we're going to be outputting when we build our project. OK, so that's great. We've created the library now. but what we want to do is actually use that library so that within our main project program here, we can call this my function uh, function call. So we want to do something like this: print f percent f, and here we want to call my function. So it's going to return to us a uh, floating point number, so we should be able to see 3.14 displayed on the screen. But notice what happens when we try to build and run this program. <coughs> there are build errors, and if we scroll up here, it says it doesn't know what my function is. Well, the reason why it doesn't know is because, first of all, this function exists in a different project. It actually exists in a different library. So we need to inform it about that uh, function call. We can do that by calling include, and we need to include the header file where that function is defined, and that was mylib.h. So here we'll type in mylib.h. We can compile it now, and we still get a fatal error because now it says cannot open include mylib.h. This project doesn't know where this file is located. They're not located in the same directory, so they can't see each other. You need to go under the main project's properties, and under C, C++, there's an option here for additional include directories. In here, you need to be able to specify where is this file located with respect to where uh, this project is located. Well, I know that it's going to be back one directory and inside my library. So let's go and update that. Now let's go and compile, and you see it succeeded. It succeeded because it was able to find that uh, mylib.h file uh, with respect to this project. But notice that we can't build it yet. If we try to build, we have one succeeded and one failed. Well, the one that succeeded is our library because it already passed. But our failure is because we cannot resolve this function. What that means is the program knows about this file here, and it knows that there's supposed to be a function that returns a floating point number. But it can't actually see this function uh, inside of the library because we haven't told our project which library to, to find this implementation inside. So we need to go back inside of the project, under Properties, under Linker, we have an input selection here. And under the input, we have additional dependencies. So here we can specify what are the other libraries that we want to include. Well, we know it's going to be called mylibrary.lib because that's what we've seen inside of the mylibrary uh, project settings. So let's add that and see what happens now. We're still getting an error because now it says cannot open this file mylibrary.lib. It cannot find it because, once again, it doesn't know where to look for it. So we need to go back into the properties, and under the general tab, there's additional library directories. So in here, we need to specify where to find that file. Again, we go back one directory, then we're going to go inside of the my library directory. And we also need to go into the debug folder, like so. Because again, we'll go in here where 
inside my library, inside debug, that's where you're going to find mylibrary.lib. So if we go and build this, we see now that everything has succeeded and our project was able to see our library. So if we run our program, control F5, we see the output 3.14 on the screen. All right, so that's the process you need to go through. Once you've done it already, you can go back inside of our library and because everything's already set up, we can add much more uh, functionality in here quite easily. So now let's say we want to create a function that returns an integer, uh, my int, and it accepts maybe an integer. We're going to implement this guy. And let's say that this guy is going to take the value that gets passed in and it's going to multiply it by minus 5. And inside of my project, let's go and create an integer. We'll define it to be equal to my int and we're going to pass in, I don't know, let's say 1. And then let's just print this guy out to the screen. We made a mistake here somewhere. Let's just take a look. Uh, oh, this is an interesting problem. I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, our projects right now are set up in such a way that we don't have any dependencies. So what this means is when we go and build our project, the compiler is just going to go and build our project that's right here. However, this project does not build our library first. And because we've updated our library, our project doesn't know that there's this new function in there. So what we can do is under uh, project, project dependencies, we can specify that main project is going to depend on my library. What this is going to do is it's going to force the build order to be my library and then main project. If we take this dependency out, you notice that the order is main project and then my library, which doesn't make sense because if we update the library, the project won't know the difference. So we need to make this dependency. All right, now that we've made it, if we go and build our project, you notice that it succeeds. It succeeded because if we go in here, we see that it first built my library and then it built my project, my main project. So the changes that we made inside of the library are now reflected inside of the main project, so we are able to call our new function that we just created. Let's go and run this, and sure enough, we see we have 3.14 and then minus 5. So everything is working fine now. Well, I hope you learned something in this video about uh, projects and libraries. And come back for the next VMK where I'm going to describe an introduction to classes inside C++.